Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. In this video, I'm going to give you three tips that every Lightroom user should know. Before we begin, if you could do me a favor, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also, click that little bell so you get updates. Share and like this video and follow me on Instagram. I am at Anthony Morganti on Instagram. In the description below this video, I'll have a link to my Instagram. I'll also have all the gear info I used for these three images I'm gonna be showing you and all the settings I use to capture these images. All right, tip number one, targeted adjustments. Did you ever look at an image and you wanna target a specific tone or target a specific color? Well, you actually can. To target a specific tone, you would go, you guessed it, to the tone curve. And the targeted adjustment tool is this little circle right here. If you click on it, your cursor will turn into the targeted adjustment tool. And if you look at the curve, you'll notice as I move my cursor around, a little point is moving around the curve. Those are the different tones in the image. And let's just say, for the sake of argument, I want to go down here in the shadows area. And you can see that point is now in the lower left-hand corner of the tone curve. Let's say I want to make the shadows a little darker. I will click down with the left mouse button, and when I do, the cursor will disappear. So I click down, it disappeared. But now I'm dragging my mouse straight down, and I'm making the shadows darker. If I pushed my mouse up, I would make the shadows brighter. So I'm going to make those just a little darker. About like that. Now I'd like to make the highlights a little brighter. So I'm going to go up to a cloud. And I'm going to again click with the left mouse button. And when I do, the cursor will disappear. And then I'm going to push up with the mouse to make the highlights a little brighter. So I made the shadows a little darker, the highlights a little brighter. You can see we have this kind of S in our curve right here. And I must have double clicked down here. I actually have two points, but it didn't hurt anything. It looks pretty good, actually. So we have this gentle S curve. And I did that with the targeted adjustment, adjustment tool. When I'm done with it, just click on the tool again, and we're back to our normal cursor. Now, I mentioned you could target a color as well. Well, see this willow tree right here? I'd like to make that color brighter. Well, to do that, go to the HSL Color tab, and there's three components to the HSL Color tab. U, Saturation, and Luminance. I'm just going to go to Luminance, and I want to make this brighter. So I'll get the targeted adjustment tool. It's right here. And I'll take it and put my cursor right over that willow tree. I'm going to click with the left, left mouse button. Again, the cursor will disappear. I'm going to push straight up. And you can see it's making that tree brighter. And it's actually moving the yellow slider and the green slider very, very slightly. So it actually will move more than one slider. Whatever is under that cursor, whatever colors are under that cursor will be moved when you push your uh, mouse up or down. If you push the mouse up, you'll move the sliders to the right. If you pull the mouse down, you'll pull those sliders to the left. So I want to make that, as I mentioned, tree brighter. Now I'd like to make the blue sky darker. So I'm going to go up here into the blue sky, and I'm going to click with the left mouse button. Again, the cursor disappears. I'm going to drag down, and I'm making the blue sky darker. Now, it is really too blue, isn't it? So I'm going to go to saturation. I want to take some of the saturation out of that blue sky. I'm in the saturation tab. I'm just going to click on the blue sky and to move these sliders to the left, pull down on the mouse. And you can see I'm moving that blue slider. So I'm taking some of the blue out. So it makes it look a little more realistic. So those are targeted adjustments. You could target a specific tone or target a specific color. All right, tip number two that every Lightroom user should know, clipping indicators. Clipping indicators are probably the question I get the most because people accidentally turn these on. They don't know how they did it. They don't know what they are, and they don't know how to turn them off. All right, I have this image here, and you can look at the histogram here. And you can see on the far left, I have a triangle. If I hover over that triangle, you'll see blue gets overlaid on the image. That's the clipping indicator for the shadows. That means I'm clipping shadows. When you're clipping the shadows, that means there's no detail there at all. It's absolute black. Conversely, if I move over to the right side of the histogram and hover over that clipping indicator, you'll see that red gets overlaid on the image. 
That means I'm clipping the highlights. If you're clipping the highlights, there's no detail at all in the highlights. Typically, you don't like to process an image in such a way that you're losing a lot of detail. So you'd like to have minimal amount of detail loss in the highlights and the shadows usually. Now you could turn these on individually permanently by just clicking on them. So the shadows clipping indicator is now on. To turn it off, I could click on it again. You could do the same thing for highlights. You can turn them both on at the same time by simply hitting the J key on your keyboard. Hit the J key and they're both on. Hit the J key again and they're both off. I think this is how people accidentally turn these on. So I'm going to turn them on. Now what do we do once we see that they're there? Well, we could do a targeted tone adjustment and just go over the red part and pull down to bring down the highlights and go over the blue part and push up to bring up the shadows. Or you could just go to the basic tab and usually it's the blacks and whites slider. These take care of it. So I'll go to the whites first and I'm going to click on the slider and just pull it to the left. And you can see as I do, we'll start to take away some of that red. And you just want to keep going until all the red is gone. Similarly, we could go to the blacks, click on that and move that to the right and just move that till all the blue is gone. Now, some people like, including me, I sometimes like to clip my shadows a little bit, a very little bit. It's really up to you, whatever works best for you. And that's how you do it. Now to turn these indicators off because they're on and they'll be on on any image you pick, just hit that J key again so you have them turned off. Now, that's tip number two. For tip number three, we'll go to this image and I just wanna to talk to you about cropping. We're gonna get the crop tool and you probably know that when you turn on the crop tool, you'll have a crop overlay and by default, right out of the box, Lightroom's gonna show you the rule of thirds. A lot of people don't like to crop to the rule of thirds. Well, there's a lot of different overlays included in Lightroom. To access them, simply hit the O key on your keyboard. I'll hit the O key once, I'll go from rule of thirds to this kind of diagonal line thing. Hit the O key again, and I have this triangle. Now, this, you'll notice, goes from the lower left corner to the upper right. What if I want it to go the other way? Hold the shift key in and hit the O key and I'll flip it. Hit the shift key and the O key again and I'll flip it back. So you could flip it back and forth. Just hold the shift key in while you hit the O key. Now the next crop overlay is a golden ratio. It's similar to rule of thirds, but that middle part is a little narrower. Hit the O key again and we have the golden spiral. Now this is one we could flip all around. Hold the shift key in and hit the O key and you'll see we'll flip it to the right to the upper right, left, and then you could flip orientation. It's originating now from this uh, upper left-hand corner and it's flipping that way. So you could see how it goes from horizontal, vertical. So there's a lot of different variations of this. Now the idea here is you would like uh, whatever is the most interesting thing in your image to be right in this area of the spiral right here. And if you have a flowing line or something like that, you'd like the line, if possible, to go along the spiral. So that's how you would use that. Now we'll hit the O key again, and we have crop overlay. So if you're gonna be a 16 by nine or print a 16 by nine, you could see that way, 16 by 10, two by three, five by seven. Hold the shift key in and hit the O key and you'll flip it horizontally. So you have them flipped horizontally. If you want them to go back vertically, hold the shift key in while hitting the O key and you'll go back vertical. So you could have those oriented either way. Hit the O key again and we have a tight grid. Hit the O key again and we're back to the rule of thirds. Well, let's just say all you ever use is the rule of thirds and the golden spiral and you don't use any of these other ones and you don't wanna waste time cycling through all of them. Well, you could pick and choose which ones are showing up when you hit the O key. To do that, go up to the tools, then down to crop guide overlay, then down to choose overlays to cycle. And you can see they're all checked. Now I mentioned, I just wanna use rule of thirds. So I'm gonna get rid of grid, get rid of diagonal, get rid of triangle, get rid of golden ratio and get rid of aspect ratios. Well, actually aspect ratios has to be checked for the others to be checked. Just a little quirk of Lightroom. So we're gonna hit okay. Now I'll hit the O key. There's the spiral. 
the aspect ratios, the, the uh, rule of thirds. No, I'm just cycling those three and no others. If you want to bring them back, just go back up to tools, down to crop guide overlay, choose overlays to cycle, and then you could just click the ones that you unclicked a second ago, and then you could cycle through all of them. So that's it. That's three tips that every Lightroom user should know because I think these tips will help you use Lightroom more effectively and more efficiently. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.